Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Parkview Restaurant here in Corning, Arkansas. This is the Corning Sports Report live coverage of the Bobcat Football Coaches Show. We've got three coaches here. Uh, very, very, very pleased, you guys, to be here. Appreciate that. Thank you guys for being here as well, and uh, thank you guys for tuning in as well. We appreciate that. Uh, we're going to turn it right over and jump right into there as they're serving some food back there. There's Brittany, if we can get her on camera. Okay. Uh, again, I'm your host, Andy Earls. Um, we're going to go over a few questions here. We're going to start with the, uh, the new head coach, Gunnar Cook. Gunnar, if you are uh, assistant coach, he, he got a promotion. I just gave him a promotion. The That's new okay. assistant coach, <laughs> Gunnar Cook, he's going to go over a few things here, tell a little bit about his backstory, where he came from, hobbies, stuff like that. So, Gunnar, take it away, buddy. Like Andy said, uh, I'm Gunnar Cook. I'm the new assistant coach. Have not made that jump to head yet, maybe one day in the future. Um, I'm from small town just like Corning, Walnut Ridge, Hoxie. I say Walnut Ridge, Hoxie because it's one town. If you've ever been there, you have definitely know that it's definitely not two towns. But uh, So I'm not out of my element here. Small town Corning, just like where I'm from. Um, graduated from Hoxie, played ball at Hoxie, went to ASU for four years, and now I'm just happy to be here. Awesome, awesome. What is your, you haven't been here obviously just a few months, but what are your first, uh, first impressions of the city uh, the people, uh, and obviously the school program. Well, just like I said, Corning's a small town, just like Walnut Ridge and Hoxie is where I, c where I come from, and it's just it's a lot like home for me. Uh, I'll tell you one thing that's a lot different is when you come from Walnut Ridge and Hoxie, you got to decide are you going to root for the Mustangs or are you going to root for the Bobcats. But what I love about Corning is everyone roots for the Bobcats, so I'm really excited to see what it looks like on Friday night when the stands are packed and everyone's supporting one school and one team. Now, Gunnar, what made you choose Corning? Why Corning? Why now? Well, just to be honest with you, it was the opportunity. When I was looking for jobs and Coach Treadway approached me and he said he might have something for me at Corning, I loved the opportunity that Corning had. Uh, everyone knows the story of what's been, but just having known that, and knowing what I bring to the table, I really felt like I could help this program turn around and help the program get back on the winning track of things. And I'm hoping to prove that with the rest of these guys next week. Okay, now for the most important question for Mr. Gunnar Cook that we all are dying to know. Between you, yourself, and Coach Trevor Poe, who's taller? Well, it depends. Uh, it depends on if uh, Coach Poe has got his hair cut, it's definitely me. But if he's growing it out uh, at the end of the season and it's getting a little wild, it's going to have to be Poe. That's, that's a pretty good answer. I like that. I like that. Y'all give it up for Gunner Cook, guys. Again, we want to, uh, we want to thank Amy and Danny Jordan for allowing us to, uh, to come in here. They're hosting us, essentially. They've always been so good to us. Uh, not just us, but the entire town, the Bobcat football program, the community, and that means a lot to us. So thank you guys. Obviously, I know Danny's going through some things, so if y'all could uh, keep him in your thoughts and your prayers, we'd appreciate that too. We're going to roll right in this. Uh, we're going to go and move over to uh, assistant. You're not the head coach, Tyler. I'm sorry. The assistant coach, Tyler Golden, everybody. Hey, everybody. Uh, Tyler Golden. So this is my second year at Corning, a little bit of my background. So uh, like Coach Cook, I also grew up in a small town. I'm from a small town, southeast Missouri, so I'm an Arkansas transplant, you could say. Uh, I graduated from ASU with a, a degree in business, so I'm a non-traditional teacher. I'm in the Apple program right now, so uh, uh, I'll finish that in May and graduate from that and have a full teaching license. And uh, right now I've got a provisional license on the, uh, as, assuming I complete the program, which I will. Um, so I, I did a couple different things. I've, I've been a I'm form, former financial advisor, former restaurant manager, and uh, I finally figured out what I really wanted to do, and uh, that's be around all these kids, and, and I couldn't be in a better place. Um, so I decided to go into teaching and coaching, and, and I found Corning, or Corning found me, and, and I'm really excited to be here for my second year, um, especially with this football season coming up. Guys, we, uh, we can't wait for for the season to start next Friday night. We're, uh, we're extremely excited and uh, we're very confident that we're fixing to turn this thing around, so. Absolutely. Now this question is, uh, is more from me. Some of these questions are from fans or from uh, the alum or whatever it may be. This question's from me. Uh, you're the most calm, 
cool and collected coach I think I have ever seen. Have you ever, you ever yelled at anybody? Have you ever been in a fight? Well, we, we won't discuss my uh, past, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think the kids will probably tell you a, a little different. They've, they've seen uh, the different side of me um, when I get upset. You know, we, we've all got that side, I guess, but, um, you know, I, I definitely think they might tell you something different, but I generally, I, I probably am the most laid back uh, of our coaching, coaching staff. Uh, I'm pretty laid back. You know, I, I don't really really get too high. I don't get too low. I, I tend to try to stay even keeled. Um, and uh, the other thing, I really don't show a lot of emotion. And uh, that's something that I try to overcome. I try to overcompensate for. Um, Christmas at my house gets a little awkward for me because <laughs> I'll get something and it's just, I'm just excited beside myself to get this. But you can't tell. I'm just deadpan like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> and my family hates it, but, you know, that's – I, I guess that's just me. That's my personality. I, I you know, I'm just kind of even keel. Wow, well, that's that's a shock. You don't show emotion. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Uh, what's different about this year's defense than last year's? Obviously, you're a returning assistant coach. What do you feel is different about this year's defense than last year's defense? Well, I really I plan for and and I expect us to bring a lot more intensity this year. Um, we're we're pumped up. We're ready to go. Um, we're really working on flying to the ball. We're, we're going to bring a lot more of a physical game this year, I, plan, I hope. And, uh, you know, we're going to bring some heat, and we're, uh, we're, we plan to let our boys uh, get out there and play and give them the opportunity to make some plays. Awesome. We like to hear that for sure. We love to hear that. You have been around Coach Treadway now, I guess, for a few months. What are your first impressions as a, a co-worker, obviously, assistant with him, uh, even a friend now, obviously? What are your first impressions of Coach Treadway? Well, first, don't let his age fool you. Um, <laughs> Coach Redway still got plenty of energy, still got plenty left in the tank. Um, you know, it, I, I love the experience, first of all. He, he brings a, just a ton of experience to us. And, uh, you know, myself, I've, I've enjoyed learning so much from him already. And, you know, you think about it, he's been coaching 20 years longer than I've been alive. So, <laughs> 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 not to give away his age or anything, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, between the – between the four of us, I feel like we've got a really, really just a good chemistry with our staff right now, and that all starts with Coach Treadway. You know, he's come in, and he's um, he's he's willing to give us responsibility and let us be have a big part of this. And uh, I've just really enjoyed that, and I appreciate that, and I and I know the other coaches do as well. And uh, you know, he he kind of makes sure everyone gets to be involved in all aspects. Awesome, awesome. Well, Tyler, we appreciate. It. Everybody, get up for Tyler Golden. Before we move on to our, our new uh, head coach, I didn't emote you, coach, I'm sorry. Uh, Tre Trevor Poe could not beat her night. His daughter had a swim meet, and obviously family comes first, so uh, wishing her the best in, in the swim meet. Um, he, he wanted to be here. He hated that he missed it, but obviously family comes first, so we understand that. Um, introducing our new head coach, we plucked him from the other Bobcats across there in Walnut Ridge, Larry Treadway. I'm Larry Treadway. Uh, as he said, I've, I've been coaching a long time to be really right to the number. I'd say this is 45 years. Uh, started in Paragool back in the 70s and uh, through the years, just loved it, always liked doing it. I grew up in Newport, Arkansas. I uh, grew up playing football, basketball, baseball, played all the sports, went to Arkansas State, graduated and just started coaching. I I walked on to ASU one year and played for Clinton Gore, and he picked up the job, picked up the phone and called Paragu and got me a job that year. And from there, uh, I've just stayed with it. So it's really been uh, the best time. You know, I tell people it's really amazing sometimes when you can do something you love to do and you get paid for it. Because I promise you, the first 20, 25 years, I would have done this free. I, would, I wouldn't have done You wouldn't have had to give me any money at all. I liked it that much. So uh, I'm married to Diane. I have two kids, Logan and Chelsea. Uh, and uh, Diane is in Batesville. We have a house there. I have a house here, and uh, we, we just kind of meet Chelsea at, at uh, Arkansas State. There's a little triangle there. There's a lot of travel involved, but it's been a great move for me. I've met a lot of great people here, and uh, I'm, really, I'm really tickled to be here. Coach, we're going to hit you with a really tough question right out of the gate. This is a fan question. Uh, Eric Arnold, you're welcome. So the tough question of the night is, 
Are we going to paint anything on the, on the football field? Any, any logos, any markings, anything, any lettering, anything like that? The, these two guys on both sides of me, of course, Coach Poe, uh, first of all, these, these guys are just pumped with energy. They're, they're energetic. They want to do it. They work hard. Kids like them. They really like them. They respect them. Uh, I think uh, Coach Cook has already told me he's talking about putting some lines in the end zone. I know our basketball coach, Coach Murray, is going to come out and help us put the, bob head in the middle, bobcat head in the middle of the field. So yeah, there are some plans to do that. So that's not that's that's not a bad question. We are we are yeah, kind Eric, of prepared to do that. It's not a bad that. question. Yeah. So could you, uh, Coach Tridway, could you grade your overall experience uh, here in the first few months of being a Bobcat head coach? Well, I guess if if you just grade it, I mean, you know, there, there's been it's been a tough road for a little while, and, and we're making progress, and these guys are doing a great job. But you know, I think I think above average for sure because we we feel like we've made a lot of strides you know getting all these kids to come out getting them to play those kids trusting me coming to us with this staff has just been an amazing feat so I, i'd say above average great at this point awesome who might be a unknown player that maybe we didn't hear a lot from last year or even a rising sophomore that uh, could easily make a big difference in and with the bobcat football program this year well, the first kid I think about when I look at those sophomores is, is Parker Davis. He's, uh, gosh, he's going to be a defensive back. He's tall. He can run. Doesn't say much. As a matter of fact, I guess if, I don't even hear him talk. I, don't, I, I assume he can, but he doesn't say anything. But very good football player, young sophomore, tall, uh, comes from a family of football players, as most of you well know. So right now it would probably be Parker. What are your thoughts? Obviously, we got some new rule changes this year, and the one that I'm really interested to hear about is what are your thoughts on the new 40-second play clock instead of a 25-second play clock? Well, that's – you know, I really don't even know why we did that, but I was telling Coach Cook and I were talking about a while ago, he's, he's already watched a couple of games and people are using the 40-second clock. I don't know that it speeds the game up. I don't know that it slows the game down. I, I really not not even sure the transition what what that was all about. But we understand how it works, so we're gonna we're gonna adjust to it. We we won't huddle, so it's not gonna affect us. Matter of fact, it may give us more time. Okay, fair enough. Who was the better athlete back in the day, you or Miss Treadway? Oh God. <laughs> well, guys, I'm married to a Wisconsin woman. Uh, She's a two-time All-American in track and cross-country. She's won seven state championships in cross-country. Well, it may be a record in the state of Arkansas. She won seven in a row. She has a ring for every finger except one. So my guess would be her. I was just going to answer that for you, actually. <laughs> I think it's a resounding Miss Treadway. Yeah, so if you're watching Miss Treadway, you won that round, I promise she, you. She does. She's a good athlete, good teacher. And uh, she, I just let her retire, so she'll be real proud of that answer. <laughs> That's awesome. Coach, are there any any notable changes as far as positions from last year to this year for Bobcat football players? I don't, I don't know so much about the positions, but we have kids we hope that aren't going to have to go both ways. Uh, we hope that, that we've got some kids that can fill in. You know, you'd like to have, you know, 17, 18 kids on the field if you could, and, and we're trying to work that way. We started out – I know uh, Coach Golden started out with me, and we said, hey, let's see how many kids we can get on the field and still be productive. And we're working on that. But, you know, that might be the only thing different. Probably a lot of those kids won't have to play both ways. I understand. What was the biggest hurdle that you, that you had as far as whenever you, got, whenever you inherited this program? What was the biggest hole to dig out of? Or what was the biggest hurdle you had when you inherited the football program? Well, you know, these kids didn't know me. I came over in the spring, and, and uh, Coach Golden and Coach uh, Poe were it's already, already had them in all season. They knew the kids, and, of course, you know, they were selling me to the kids, and I was trying to meet the kids, although I was only over here long enough to see the senior high kids, so I didn't get to see the junior high or the seventh grade. And, of course, uh, when I hired Coach Cook and brought him on, he got in there and started mixing it up. But the toughest thing, guys, is this, and this is a, this is a tribute to your kids. You know, all the, all the trouble we've had in terms of winning football games, I know it's been a sad story, but here's the deal. The fact that those kids will still come out and play football just amazes me. And, and I think that's the biggest thing that we got over real fast. I was worried about that. Now I'm not worried about that because they're going to show up. They're going to come and play. And I think that's, that, that really had me worried at one time. But now I can see uh, those kids are here to play, and, and I'm, I'm real proud of that. I couldn't agree with that more. I really couldn't. On the coaching staff, 
Who is known for being the tough guy or the strict guy with the kids? Who, who is that? Well, I think Coach Golden may have told a little white lie earlier. <laughs> now, the truth is, Coach, what he does, guys, he, one thing he stresses every day is he said, look, we're going to respect each other. The kids are going to respect each other. You're going to respect your coaches, and you're going to respect your teachers. And Coach Golden teaches that really every day. And I promise you, when you cross that line, he's going to, that when he says he doesn't get upset, that's the only time you'll really see him upset. He'll be upset if you disrespect him, any coaches, or any kids. And I think that's really a big thing with him. I, I, matter of fact, I know it is. We've talked about it. But it doesn't make him a bad guy. It just means you got to know that you got you, you can't do those things around him. And, and that's really, you know, we want that. We want that talk. You, you want that talk to your kids. You want your kids to be good kids. As I told people in the very beginning, I don't know how good a football player I'm going to make out of all your kids, but I'm going to make good, good people out of your kids. Or, or they won't be around us. They, they know they're going to act right. They're going to do right in school. when They're going to come to practice. And that's the same thing he teaches. And Coach Cook, I mean, gosh, he, I mean, he's a disciple of, of discipline. I mean, he, uh, he comes out here, and, I mean, in the very beginning, he showed the kids how to do things, how to run drills. He can still do them. He's young enough to do those things. Uh, and that thing about being taller than Poe, I think he is taller than Poe right now. <laughs> I'm glad we settled that. That was yeah. very important. I'm glad. I wouldn't have slept tonight, so <laughs> absolutely. Coach Treadway, will you be directly in charge of calling the plays on offense, or will you kind of delegate that to one of your assistants, or will it be a mixture? Well, here's what we've done. Trevor Poe, guys, let's talk about him just a little bit. He couldn't be here. And, I, you know, he's with his daughter, and that's a wonderful thing. But T Trevor, I don't know, people don't know a lot about him that didn't know in, in college. You know, Trevor had a 32 on the ACT. He's, he's pretty smart. I can promise you, he's pretty smart. When I was at Walnut Ridge, I tried to hire Trevor Poe. I had it lined up. He was, I interviewed him. I was excited. And I, my administration wouldn't let me hire him. And, and it made me mad. Poe remembers all this. And then when I came here and I knew he was here, I thought, gosh, he's already here. You know, I just need to talk him into staying. You know, I, I'd, I'd already met Tyler, so I knew, you know, I had another good coach, and I was trying to hire uh, Coach Cook. So I felt pretty good about everything. But when we sat down and talked one day, the three of us, we talked about offense. Well, Trevor's pretty sharp, and he, he can tell you things he wants to do. Well, I showed him what I wanted to do, and I didn't want to change my terminology, and that's where Coach Cook came in. Coach Cook stepped in and said, well, here's your terminology with the number system. So everybody made a contribution. Tyler's the offensive line coach, and I know in high school he was a quarterback. So he's probably – that transition was hard for him. He's already learned it. He's got the offensive lineman – uh, playing well. So the whole thing comes like this. We all have headsets on. We all make, he makes the play. Uh, Trevor calls the play. Uh, we're not going to say don't run that or, you know, that's a bad call, but we're all going to talk about that play. And when we're on the headsets, we'll say, all right, we'll come back to that. So everybody's going to have a part in it, but Trevor Poe is going to call the offense and Tyler's going to call the defense. So what I'm hearing is that Trevor is smarter than he looks. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I can Trevor. say that he's not here, guys. I can yeah. say that he's not here to defend. So uh, yeah. another question as well that a, a fan brought in um, as well was the O-line and D-line this year. We, we felt like we had some pretty, pretty good-sized kids there. Do you guys know, have y'all ran some numbers on the average uh, weight for the O-line and D-line? Yeah, I think Coach, just, he just ran through it a while ago. I, I guess it depends on which group we go with. Uh, we, we have a defensive group that actually the four kids up front, your average is maybe 300 pounds if those, if those big kids are out there. What do we call that? Heavy. heavy. Somebody <laughs> said meat, but we, could, we didn't want to call your kid meat, so we, we went heavy. And heavy would be true because there's some heavy kids out there. And he's got another group that's not as heavy, and that'll go about what? Two. Yeah, two. 240 for the second group, meaning another group of kids that we can put out there with a the defense. Offensively, 240-ish. Two, I'm sorry, 275. Uh, big kids, big kids. Uh, you know, so uh, Corning still produces big kicks. Matter of fact, there's a big one standing on there right now in the ninth grade. Probably 6'4", I don't know. 250, I'm not for sure. But we've got some big kids here, and we're proud of that. And that's, that's a big kid that can run, too, Mr. Ethan Jordan. So... Coach, we appreciate it. Y'all give it up for Coach Larry Treadway. Hey, thank you. Before we end it tonight, I would like to see, I'm going to get with my, my director, my producer. I call him my right-hand man. He's on the left side of your screen, but right to me, Colton Ladyman. Do you have any uh, social media questions there, anything that's popping up? that? Uh... 
Do we have anybody out here? Any, anybody in the fans, anybody in the crowd here that would like to uh, ask any questions? Everyone's really eager, man. They're just jumping up. I'm trying to figure out which one to pick right now. So, Guys, we appreciate y'all coming. Uh, this is something, actually, I'd like to just a little one-on-one -on -one time with the football players right here. If you're, if you're out there watching, I want you to hear this, okay, because I mean it. I don't know Coach Treadway uh, well enough to say a lot, but I'll tell you this. The guy wants to be here, okay? He's already, well, a couple of the assistants have elaborated on how old he is. I didn't say it, but a couple of the assistants have elaborated on how old he is. Could have easily hung it up, could have easily retired. He could be at home right now instead of up here at 830 at night or whatever it is and relaxing, watching some football, but he's here. He could have easily stayed at Walnut Ridge, somewhere where he's comfortable. I know you kids at your age probably don't understand that. As you get old like us, it's comfort and convenience is huge. He, he left a place he was comfortable with. He left a really good football program. Y'all were 9-3, and three, is that right? 9-3, and three, guys. He left that, and we obviously know our struggles. They're well documented. It ain't like he came to a program that's just you know on top of the mountain. He knew the challenges ahead, and he still is here, guys. He didn't have to do that. He didn't need to do that. He wanted to do that. Now, I don't, know, I don't know about you guys. That's somebody I can play for, whether we're up by 30, down by 30, or it's tied, no matter when it is. That's special stuff. Also, to the football players, we've got a few of them right here. We appreciate you guys showing up. Also, to you football players, too. I don't know if y'all realize this. Y'all are so zoomed in on football, and everything's been tough. It's been tough times, and we realize that. I don't guess y'all realize this or not, but there's a bunch of people behind you. And it's not just this town, guys. We got some demographics in the scrimmage game the other day. You're not corning wide, you're not county wide, you're not statewide, you're not even nationwide, guys. You're worldwide. It's global. We literally had people from Guam, from Germany, London, places like that tuning in. The state of Washington, California, Texas, New York City, Atlanta, Florida, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Virginia. Guys, everyone's out there. They're excited. We are living vicariously through you guys, and we're so proud that you guys came out to, to play this year. I don't know how many we have, but gosh, we have upwards of 30 on the senior high team. Is that close? 37. Guys, that's unbelievable. I don't know where else in the state you could do that. Go through what y'all have went through. Choose to come out there in that hot summer, that hot summer heat in August with those black pads, black helmets on. That's unbelievable to me, guys. You give up your summer as, as an, a team. You give up your Friday nights as a team, and you're working your tail off. You got discipline. You got to keep those grades up. There's so much involved in that, and y'all chose to be there. Man, I respect that. I absolutely respect that. For everybody here, in the building at Parkview Restaurant. I know y'all can hear me back there. Thank y'all for coming. We appreciate y'all. Amy, Denny Jordan, thank you guys for hosting us. Coaches, thank y'all for being here uh, at almost 8 o'clock at night. We got a little late start, had some technical difficulties. I'm blaming Colton. It's his fault, not mine. I'm kidding. We appreciate it. Guys, from Corning Sports Report, y'all have a good night. And as always,